Hello, welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert, the narrator, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Confessions. This is episode number 31. It will be another episode in my series of top 10 favorite RPGs of all time. And we are getting down to uh, the nitty gritty. I think that's what all the kids are saying. Uh, not at all. <laughs> the kids, no one has said that in uh, 25, 30 years. Um, <laughs> but we are at number four on my list of top 10 favorite RPGs of all time. Before I talk about that game that is number four, I just want to say that this series has really been fun. I've been doing a couple of episodes in a row trying to knock the series out and revisiting some of the old and not so old games that I have loved that have really been very important to me in the hobby has been fun and it's just been awesome revisiting these games and it really reminds me of why I love the hobby so much. It's just been really great going back through and and trying to remember why I love these games and why these games were so important to me. So this has been really fun. Hopefully some of you folks have been enjoying it out there, at least maybe becoming familiar with some rule systems that you may not have heard of or may not have given a try. So yeah, it's just, it's just been really fun. So on with the episode. The game that is number four on my top ten favorite RPGs of all time is... DC Adventures by Green Ronin Publishing. Now, I usually say Green Ronin, but every time I listen to someone from uh, Green Ronin Publishing, they say Ronin, so I don't know which one is correct. I've always said Ronin, but yeah, it's uh, Green Ronin or Ronin Publishing. They published DC Adventures in 2010. It is a D20 rule system and it is powered by the Mutants and Masterminds 3rd edition rule set. So Mutants and Masterminds has been around a while. It started out its life as a D20 open gaming license system. This is the third edition of Mutants and Masterminds. And DC Adventures was actually the premiere of the new third edition Mutants and Masterminds system. This came out before the third edition Mutants and Masterminds core rulebook came out. What drew me to DC Adventures? I'm pretty sure that I came across the fact that Green Ronin was releasing a DC comic book universe RPG online. Going through uh, some web websites, I found out that the game was being released. And like so many other huge uh, properties out there or franchises, when a DC Comics universe role-playing game comes out, you have to at least check it out. I mean, come on, it's DC Comics, it's Superman, it's Batman, it's Wonder Woman. You have to give it a look. I have played previous DC Universe role-playing games there, and so I, I just wanted to check it out. And when I found out that it was going to be powered by Mutants and Masterminds, a very uh, streamlined version of a D20 rule set I uh, like what I saw and um, that's what really drew me to DC Adventures what is DC Adventures about well of course it's about playing superheroes in the DC universe or playing the actual heroes from the DC universe themselves fighting for truth and justice against evil. What is the setting of the DC Adventures role-playing game? The game was released in 2010 
and at that time the DC Comics universe was launching their rebirth reboot where they were rebooting tons of their comic lines and getting rid of uh, some old lines and bringing in some some newer lines and a lot of their characters Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman were experiencing a complete makeover. Now that is not reflected in the DC Adventures role playing game. The setting for DC Adventures is Superman came from Krypton and crash landed on Earth. Batman's parents were killed in an alley. Uh, Wonder Woman came from the Amazonian island of Themyscira. The universe was started by a highly advanced race of alien beings who eventually became the Guardians who eventually created the Green Lantern Corps. So a lot of those changes in 2010, 2011 with the uh, Rebirth storyline really is not touched upon at all in the DC Adventures game. You have a very standard DC universe that most DC Comics fans would be familiar with. So that is the setting of DC Adventures. What are the mechanics of the DC Adventures role-playing game? The one thing that really struck me about DC Adventures is that it is a fixed D20 rule set. As I mentioned previously, the Mutants and Masterminds role-playing game use the open gaming license for Dungeons and Dragons D20 and started its history there. And by the time you get to third edition Mutants and Masterminds, Green Ronin has decided to fix a couple of things and a lot of these things I really, really agree with. For example, one complaint that you'll hear about D20 games is that the ability scores really don't mean anything after character creation. DC Adventures, your ability scores are your modifiers for your roles. Your ability ranks go from neg 5, which is completely inept or disabled, that's the description for neg 5, all the way up to 20, which is cosmic. Zero is average adult. Seven is best ever peak of human achievement. And at eight, you start at low superhuman. These ability ranks give you your modifier. For instance, if you have a three rank in dexterity, anything based around dexterity you will roll a d20, as you're probably familiar with, with d20 games, and you'll add three to that number. They have completely done away with having an ability score that translates into a modifier that you then add to your d20 roll. Your rank is your modifier, and you just add that to the roll. So simple, so elegant, I really support that decision. The other decision that they've made about abilities is that they have eight abilities instead of six. So what they did is they took strength and kind of took the hand-to-hand -hand accuracy bonus that strength would normally give a character in a D20 game and made that its own stat. They call it fighting. And that also makes a lot of sense to me because in a superheroes game, you have really strong characters like Superman but just because Superman is really strong it doesn't mean he's as accurate as a martial artist in hand-to-hand. -hand. Unlike other D20 rules system based games strength determines how much damage you do with a hand-to-hand -hand attack it also determines the amount of weight you can lift and carry and throw 
and it helps with your athletic skill checks and fighting is what you use for your hand-to-hand -hand attacks makes a lot of sense the other thing that they did is they uh, took dexterity and they remove the ability to dodge and your initiative and acrobatics and stealth rolls away from dexterity and they call it agility so agility is what you use uh, for your dodge defense your initiative your acrobatics and so forth and dexterity is what you use for your ranged attacks just because you have really high dexterity doesn't mean that you're necessarily nimble and acrobatic and have a really great dodge I love that also the eight ability scores you have with DC adventures is strength stamina agility dexterity fighting intellect awareness and presence as you can see they've changed some of the names charisma is now presence wisdom is now awareness the core task resolution mechanic you have your rank from your abilities and then you have your ranks from your skills you add the appropriate skill to the ability rank that it's linked with you roll a d20 you add that number to your d20 roll and you go against a target number just what you're used to from a d20 game since that's fairly straightforward I think I'm going to continue the discussion of mechanics with character creation now in DC adventures it has power levels power levels in the game go from power level 1 which gives your character 15 power points in order to develop during character creation all the way up to 20 which is 300 power points you take your power level multiplied by 15 and that's how many power points you have to construct your character when you're constructing your character you have to of course pay for your ability ranks abilities cost two power points per plus one that you want to put in a rank if you decide to give have a negative rank from neg one to neg five you get two power points back per neg one to an ability rank so all of your ability ranks start at zero which is average adult and costs no power points of course just to give you an idea Superman has a 19 <laughs> strength so one point below what they call uh, cosmic level strength then you can also spend uh, power points on your defenses as well the game has five defenses and they act as kind of a combination of static defenses when your character is being attacked or they act as saving throws as you're probably familiar with from other d20 games if you were hit with a poison you would make a saving throw to see if you can overcome the effects of the poison the five uh, defenses in the game are dodge fortitude parry toughness and will dodge and parry are active defenses and act as static defenses if someone wanted to attack you what they would do is they would roll a d20 they would add the ability score that they were using plus the appropriate skill and they want their total to be equal to your dodge if they're attacking you with a ranged attack plus 10 or if they're attacking you in hand to hand they want their their role and ability rank and skill to hit your parry plus 10 just to give you an example Superman has a parry of 10 and Wonder Woman has an unarmed attack of 14 if Wonder Woman wanted to punch Superman she would need to hit Superman's parry 
plus 10, so that would be 20. So Wonder Woman would only need a six or better on a D20 to hit Superman. As I said, Superman is far from a martial artist, but he is Superman. He is super tough and super hard to hurt, if not super hard to hit. Dodge is based on your character's rank and agility and you can increase your dodge by spending power points. It costs one power point per plus one rank that you wanted to put in a particular defense. Fortitude is based on your character's stamina, whatever you purchase their stamina up to. Parry is based on your character's fighting. Toughness is based on your character's stamina and cannot be increased by spending power points unless you were to buy a power or an advantage that did so. You are as tough as your stamina says that you are. And to be tougher, you have to have something special or be more than human. Will is based on your awareness. Fortitude measures how healthy and resistant that your character is against threats like poison and disease. Toughness is purely applied against damage the character takes and will is a measure of your character's mental stability, level-headedness, determination, self-confidence, self-awareness, and willpower and is used against mental or spiritual attacks. Dodge, fortitude, toughness, and will can also be used for resistance checks. So those are just like saving throws. You roll a d20, you add your defense to that number, and you go against a target number based on the attack or the hazard they're trying to avoid. For instance, if your character walked into a pitfall trap, you would make a dodge resistance check to not fall in. Initiative is equal to your character's uh, agility, ability rank, plus any advantages or power modifiers that you may have. You roll a d20, you add your modifier, the higher, the higher your roll is, the better doing combat. When combat occurs, you go from highest initiative roll to lowest, of course. Skills are fairly self-explanatory. It's d20, you have your skill rank, you add your ability modifiers, you add any other uh, miscellaneous modifiers. You add those together, you go against a difficulty class or target number. They call them difficulty classes. Pretty easy. There are 16 skills in the game. Acrobatics, athletics, close combat, deception, expertise, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, persuasion, ranged combat, sleight of hand, stealth, technology, treatment, and vehicles. One power point will purchase you two ranks in a skill during character creation. Then your character can also purchase advantages. Advantages are one power point per advantage rank. So there are a lot of advantages which are sim similar to feats in a lot of D20 games. And then of course you have powers. The thing that everyone comes for in a superhero game. I won't be going into great detail with the powers, but the powers of course have a power point cost. The powers have modifiers available to them where you can lower the power point cost for the power if you were to give the power some type of flaw or if you were trying to improve the effectiveness of the power, it could cr increase the power point cost. But I'm not going to go into great detail on that. A couple of other things I wanted to discuss are how damage is dealt and also the measurements table. I'll talk about the measurements table first because I really, really love this concept. So the measurement table is uh, something that you have right here. It is a chart that has five columns. Uh, the first column lists the ranks from neg five to up to 30. The second column has mass listed. The 
third column has time listed, the fourth column has distance listed, and the fifth column has volume listed. Now what the measurements table does is give you a quick snapshot I would say of how effective some abilities or powers are in the game and I've always wanted to have a simple way to explain how fast Superman can fly or how far he could throw something and the measurements table gives you an easy way to do that. You have a couple of formulas. For example, if you wanted to know what distance someone could travel in a particular amount of time, what you could do is take the time rank and the speed rank of the character Add those together and that will give you the amount of distance they could travel. Just to give you an example, let's say how far could Superman fly in an hour? So what I'll do is I'll pull up Superman here, the Man of Steel. He has a flight rank of 15. You have 15 plus the rank of what an hour is. So you look at the time column and an hour is a rank 9. So that you add those together, that's rank 24. And you go under the distance column at rank 24 and it's 64,000 miles. So in an hour Superman could fly 64,000 miles. I really, really love this measurement table and how easy they make it for you to figure out how powerful some of these characters are. So another great example is um, you can figure out how much time it would take someone to travel. And essentially what you do, you would take the distance rank and minus their speed rank. So how much time would it take Superman to fly across the United States? The United States is about 3,000 miles wide. You would look at 3,000 miles here on the chart. That would be distance rank 20. You subtract Superman's flight rank of 15 from that distance. That brings you down to rank 5 and then you just go under the time chart. It would take Superman four minutes to fly across America, 3,000 miles. I love this chart. This is one of uh, many of my favorite things about this system. I guess the last thing that I will talk about is how damage works in the games. And that example, that I gave earlier of Wonder Woman punching Superman. Let's say that she hits, she only needs a six on a D20 after all. How would she deal damage? Essentially what you would look at is the damage that Wonder Woman deals with her unarmed strike. She does 16 damage. Anytime a character is struck by damage, they have to make a damage resistance check, kind of like a saving throw. What they have to do is they use their toughness defense and they go against a target number equal to the damage rank plus 15. Wonder Woman does 16 damage with her punch. That is a 31. Superman's toughness is 18. I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. We're going to make this official. Superman has to get to a 31 with his 18 toughness. I, roll, I rolled a 9 plus uh, Superman's toughness of 18 is 27. He failed that by 4. 
The game has what's called degrees. When you fail a roll, for example, failing it by one to four is one degree of failure. Failing it by five to nine is another. Failing it by 10 to 14 is another degree, and so on. This is what happens when you fail a toughness check against damage. Superman failed by four points, so he has one degree of failure. That means he gets a neg one circumstance penalty to further resistance checks against damage. He was a little bit hurt. It makes it harder for him to resist further damage checks. Two degrees of failure means the target is dazed until the end of his next turn and has a neg one circumstance bonus. So the circumstance bonus keeps building up as you get more and more hurt. Essentially what dazed means is that a dazed character can only perform one action per turn. Then for three degrees of failure on that toughness check, the target is staggered and has a neg one circumstance penalty to further checks against damage. If the target is staggered again, three degrees of failure on a damage check, you apply the fourth degree effect, which means the character is incapacitated. He's out of the fight. And essentially what staggered means is the character is dazed and hindered. Of course, um, dazed means he can only do one action. Hindered means the character's speed rank is reduced by one, so they slow down a little bit. So that's essentially how damage works. If a character fails a toughness check, he begins to take penalties, then he becomes slowed down, then his actions are reduced, and if he takes enough, he becomes incapacitated. I really like this system. DC Adventures is my go-to rules medium supers RPG. It still is today. I uh, highly recommend the game. I really love it. Number four of my top ten favorite RPGs of all time. Thank you for checking out this episode of Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I'll see you next time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks a lot.